Old school belief was that we wanted to rest short durations between sets for muscle gain. You'd see bodybuilders giving out advice that resting just 30 to 90 seconds was ideal, helping to maximize the pump. At the same time, classic advice was in order to develop real strength, we wanted to rest three to five minutes between sets. In fact, some argued that for maximal strength development, we wanted to rest at least five minutes. This was really common in some circles of powerlifting and weightlifting, where we'd actually see people sit up chairs and gyms to rest between sets. On the flip side to both of these, we've got aerobic and fitness classes that are devoted to as little rest as possible in an attempt to push for endurance and fat burning. The real question, does this conventional wisdom stand up to science? Welcome everybody, I'm Dr. Sam Spinelli with Citizen Athletics, and today we're discussing the science of rest breaks. Whether you're a new trainee or an experienced one, you wanna know what's gonna deliver the best results. Today we're gonna to break down what the science says on how long you should rest, what it says for different situations, and why you do that. Now, if you're looking for content on mobility, strength, or moving better, make sure you subscribe to our channel below. Turn on the notification settings so you get told about any of the tips we release. For those who are looking for a program to help them with mobility, strength, or moving better in general, check out the programs we've got linked in the description box below. All right, let's talk about rest breaks. Now we're very fortunate, there's actually a lot of research examining how long we should rest to maximize strength, muscle building, and endurance. There are a few things we wanna consider in discussing this though. What actually helps build muscle? What actually develops strength? And what helps to actually maximize endurance? In particular, we wanna know what makes a difference in the long run. We see that muscle building and strength are very associated. The more muscle you have, the stronger you are. And the stronger you are, the more muscle you have. So when we see conflicting information from both powerlifters and bodybuilders, who are generally both strong and muscular, it can be very confusing. That's where science and research comes in handy. There are a lot of details that may get missed when we just follow conventional wisdom. When you're entrenched in what's happening at the moment, it can be hard to be objective and observe what's happening at a bird's eye view. For instance, while old school bodybuilders were probably right about the pump effect being enhanced with shorter duration and rest breaks, they likely didn't know how little relevance pump actually has on long-term growth. You see, when we look at the evidence on the mechanisms of hypertrophy, there are three main things that emerge. Mechanical tension, muscular damage, and metabolic stress. That pump effect is the metabolic stress. Over time, we've seen that mechanical tension has risen to the top, and the other two have been called into question, particularly metabolic stress. We can look at a paper from McKendry et al. 2016 to elaborate specifically on this topic of the relevance of the pump effect, rest interval length, and muscle building. Here the authors had individuals perform lower extremity exercises to failure and then compare either one minute or five minute rest breaks. The researchers completed multiple muscle biopsies obtained over a 28 hour time span following the exercise and they looked to analyze the myofibrillar protein synthesis, which is an analog that we use for muscle hypertrophy. Essentially, when we see a higher amount of myofibrillar protein synthesis, we know that generally there's gonna be more muscle hypertrophy occur. The authors found when comparing four hours post-exercise that the one minute group was at 76% rate, whereas the five minute group was at 152%, essentially double. By 28 hours post-exercise, the numbers had dropped off and relatively evened out. Now this was a short-term study. What we really care about is the long-term. That's where a study from Schoenfeld et al. 2016 comes in. They looked to compare one minute and three minute rest breaks between sets of young experienced lifters completing bench press and back squats. In their study, both groups saw a significant increase in strength and hypertrophy. However, they found that there was a greater increase in maximal strength and muscle thickness for the group with the longer rest breaks. As well, both groups saw an improvement in endurance and it didn't differ between the groups regardless of how short the duration was. Now this was just one study and we wanna consider the comprehensive evidence that's available. Gerzik et al. Grzyk et al. Grzyk et al. 2017. Not sure if I got that right. Completed a systematic review where they looked to examine this exact topic, muscle hypertrophy and the effects of rest breaks. They found that across the current body of research when comparing shorter duration rest breaks that have 60 seconds or less and longer duration rest breaks over 60 seconds that both can be effective. The authors noted that newer research is emerging showing that longer duration rest breaks are likely more beneficial for muscle strength and hypertrophy. DeSalis et al. 2009 provides some insight as to why this might be the case. When comparing shorter duration rest with longer duration rest, we generally see that individuals on longer duration rest breaks are able to handle more overall volume. Given that there's a strong association between training volume, how much weight is lifted in a session, and muscle hypertrophy and strength, this makes sense. Resting longer will allow you to produce more overall volume. This is further supported by Lopez et al. 2018, who looked to compare 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and 120 seconds of rest between sets. 
there was significantly lower performance for those resting 30 seconds and progressively better performance for those with increased rest. When we compare the different rest parameters of 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and 120 seconds, there are a few things that emerge. Number one, we see a progressively slower rep speed on the shorter duration rest periods. Two, we see a higher rating of perceived exertion or RPE on each set for the shorter duration rest periods. This is a common trend across the research. Together, this makes sense as to why there is a reduced total volume for the shorter duration rest periods. For endurance, there's a little bit less clarity in the research on this. Generally, we see most of the studies looking at endurance and rest breaks being short studies. In these short studies, we generally see that a shorter rest break is more beneficial for endurance. This would make sense as you're getting accommodated to the task at hand. However, when we look at the longer duration studies, this doesn't necessarily pan out. We can look at the study from Schoenfeld at all that we discussed earlier as a prime example. When comparing longer and shorter duration rest breaks, there was no difference in endurance in the long run. This is likely because for the individuals who had longer duration rest breaks, they got stronger and then were working at a relatively lower demand comparative to the one at max. Whereas for the people that were doing shorter duration rest breaks, they got more accommodated to having a higher level of metabolic fatigue. Another factor to consider is that not all exercises have the same demand or produce the same fatigue. For instance, doing a deadlift is generally gonna be more demanding and more fatiguing than doing a bicep curl. We can see research from Senna et al. 2016 to highlight this detail specifically. They looked to compare the performance effects across both single joint and multi-joint exercises. The group tested one, two, three, and five minute rest breaks between bench press and a pec fly. The researchers found that for single joint movements, the highest performance occurred for those resting three minutes. However, the level of performance for a two, three, and five minute rest break did not differ significantly. The one minute break did though. They had a significant drop in performance. For the bench press, the authors found that the highest level of performance occurred for the five minute rest break. When comparing rest breaks, three minutes and five minutes had about one and a half reps difference. In this study, they didn't consider that statistically significant, but for most lifters, we'd probably care about one and a half reps. In contrast, the one and two minute rest breaks, they had a drastic decrease in performance. The one minute rest break had almost half the number of repetitions achieved across the whole time. This would guide us for isolation or less taxing exercises. We can probably get away with less rest compared to multi-joint exercises. Generally, we're gonna be able to consider that for a single joint exercise, two minutes is probably gonna be okay and we get away with it without a big drop off in performance, but three minutes is probably ideal. For a multi-joint exercise, we're gonna be looking at five minutes as the ideal, but you can probably get away with three minutes not having a significant drop off. Now, there are still other factors to consider beyond just rest length. As De Salas et al. points out in their article, there's likely both a combination of physiological and psychological factors at play. There's still more to learn from the standpoint of psychological and physiological preparedness to return to repeated efforts. From a psychological standpoint, some individuals might thrive off actually having a shorter duration rest break in contrast to the physiological benefit that they might get from a longer duration. For instance, some people might actually perform better overall having a shorter duration rest break, such as a two minute break on a single joint exercise, than if they had rested a little bit longer and might have had a better physiological benefit, but a lower benefit overall from a psychological standpoint. Similarly, from a physiological standpoint, we're still trying to figure out how much effort is required to get benefit for hypertrophy, strength, and endurance. A lot of our current evidence is guiding us that we need to at least achieve an RPE six to seven to have a substantial stimulus for strength and hypertrophy. As we get into higher RPEs, we start to tax the system to a higher degree and require a longer rest break. However, we don't know how much more rest or how much less rest is required based off the RPE yet. Essentially, there's a lot that we're still trying to figure out, but we do have a lot of consistency in the literature. Practically, what does this all mean? In a dream world, you're probably best off resting at least three minutes before repeating the same movement. This is basically across strength, hypertrophy, and endurance. Now we need to be pragmatic and realize that not everyone is gonna have that kind of time. In that case, for single joint exercises, you're probably fine to cut back to two minutes of rest. Whereas for multi-joint exercises, you're gonna to wanna to try and carve out the time available to have that three minute break. Other considerations that we're gonna examine in the future are gonna be things like supersets, which may allow you to get more work done in a set time frame and not necessarily give you a lot of detriment. For anyone looking to get more endurance, particularly for an upcoming event, you might benefit from decreasing your rest intervals for a short duration. In a future video, we're gonna break down what the science says on what you should do actually during your rest breaks. If you're looking for a program that's gonna help you maximize your time investment in fitness, check out the programs that we offer in the description box below. At our site, citizenathletics.com, we have a range of different products as well as a ton of free educational content that you would benefit from. 
Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.